So it's a pleasure for us to uh, have on board Dr. Prabhaka, Principal Scientist Entomology from Krida Hyderabad, for a session on IPCC reports on climate change and points for plants of ac actions. Dr. Prabhaka has obtained his graduation and post-graduation from Andhra Pradesh Agriculture University and his doctorate in entomology from IRA New Delhi. His key areas of interest are climate change in agriculture, uh, remote sensing of crop stress, developing decision support systems for crop stress management. And Dr. Prabhaka has vast experience, around 24 years of research experience in ICR. And he is currently leading the uh, National Innovations in Climate Resilience Agriculture uh, program, which is a flagship network project of ICR, which is implemented across the country. He has to his credit several research publications, both national and international, and has authored and edited several books. And he is the visiting scholar of Oklahoma State University, USA, fellow of Royal so Entomological Society, and fellow of several other prestigious societies. And Dr. Prabhakar is also the is recipient of many science awards, uh, both national and international. To name a few, he is the recipient of Young Scientist Award by DST, Best Scientist Award by Pearl Foundation, and Outstanding Agriculture Scientist by B.V. David Foundation. He has been deputed by Government of India to represent in several international fora like SARC, G20, Quad, IPCC, UNEP, etc., uh, which are related to climate resilient agriculture. So I welcome you, sir. The platform is yours. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Vidya. And also, I thank uh, the Kappa and uh, Dr. Tonapi and all other uh, senior colleagues. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, I'll be sharing uh, my thoughts on IPCC, Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change. Dr. Sanjay, uh, before me, he just gave a beautiful uh, a narration of uh, uh, UNFCCC, uh, uh, for starting from uh, Rio to uh, Glasgow. It was a bit uh, very nice to hear to him. And uh, IPCC is a part of it, uh, 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 part of commitment in UNFCCC. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, give you a brief of uh, how this IPCC uh, uh, is playing key role in climate change in general and in particular to agriculture sector. Uh, I would like to briefly uh, introduce the IPCC process as such, its functions, and how it contributing to climate, climate science and policy making. Then, uh, there's reports uh, because IPCC gives the several man major mandate of IPCC is to produce reports. There are several kinds of reports, uh, though we will not be uh, de dealing with many other reports. The, the, the recent one, which has been referred in the morning, the IPCC sixth assessment report is called AR6 in short, and it has three parts, uh, uh, working group one, two, and three. So we will see what are the major uh, take uh, messages from these uh, reports specific to agriculture sector. And then, um, uh, uh, I, I also have happened to uh, attend, as Dr. Dante was mentioning, uh, I had an opportunity to visit uh, uh, COP26 as a, a, a part of Indian delegation. I will share uh, one couple of slides what happened there in specific to agriculture sector. Now, the, the brief of uh, uh, the IPCC is, as Dr. Sanjay said, it all started in 1988, uh, uh, the establishment of IPCC jointly by uh, World Meteorological Organization and United Nations. And then it started its functions uh, actually from 1990 onwards. So uh, the, as I said before, the, uh, the major purpose of IPCC is to bring signs of climate change to the growing, uh, 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 for bringing public awareness and also uh, uh, involve, by involving several uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, not only government sector, including several, several stakeholders. Uh, the base, basis for this is a peer-reviewed literature. So this report, this is a cycle, uh, the cycle of five to six years. It will, continue, as I said, it will from uh, start from 1990, uh, and then now it's uh, sixth cycle is going on. It's called uh, ER six. Uh, uh, so we will see what are those reports and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what are those important messages in these uh, cycles. Now, before uh, going to that. Uh, how IPCC uh, prepares the reports, just to uh, bring to your notice, because it has a very uh, uh, comprehensive uh, 
system and also a, a detailed methodology uh, to prepare a report because it's a, a global report. Unless there's an agreement uh, between the parties, this report will not be accepted. So that's why uh, it starts with a scoping uh, workshop uh, when the, 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 the start of the cycle. Then uh, uh, it approves uh, outlines. The panel then approves, the, there is a separate panel, it approves the outline. Once outline is approved, nominations for, for authors are invited from different governments. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the, 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 there will be a bureau who selects these authors. Once these authors are selected, then they will start preparing the draft, uh, first draft. This first draft will be circulated to the government departments for their comments. They'll go for second draft. Second draft again will be circulated to the, all the uh, um, uh, government departments and other stakeholders. And they will take uh, the re reviews and try to revise it two times, twice. Then finally, this uh, uh, summary for policymakers, uh, the uh, synthesis of these reports will be present, uh, presented before the governments for their review. Critical review will be done. Um, once it is completed, the report is, uh, is ready for release. This is how uh, the process of IPCC report uh, goes on. Now, uh, uh, let us start with the latest reports. Uh, uh, in addition to uh, assessment reports, uh, IPCC also pro uh, publishes uh, uh, certain special reports. Uh, you can see the uh, recent reports I uh, just show showing here. Uh, one is global warming of 1.5 degrees centigrade, uh, where the signs of uh, uh, how the 1.5 degrees centigrade has been uh, at, I mean, arrived at this 1.5 degrees centigrade and how to curtail the temperatures to 1.5, probability of shooting the temperature beyond 1.5, all these things have been discussed. The second important report was uh, climate change and land, which is relevant to agriculture sector, where uh, the details, detailed report uh, based on the scientific evidences on the, the, on the impact of climate change and desertification, land degradation, sustainable land management, food security, and more importantly, greenhouse uh, gas fluxes. Uh, this has been uh, uh, documented and presented in this uh, report. The third report is a special report on ocean uh, cryosphere, though it's not directly relevant to agriculture sector, but uh, it mostly deals with uh, the uh, Arctic uh, uh, ice melting, uh, uh, and how it impacts the monsoon cycles, which indirectly uh, uh, affects the agriculture sector. Now, uh, uh, there is a, a last, another important report was uh, the um, uh, guidelines for greenhouse gas inventories, because uh, there was uh, uh, one publication earlier in, I think, 2000, uh, early, early 2000s. Now, this has, uh, this has been refined now, because the, uh, as the technology changes, the uh, methodology uh, for emissions uh, is also have been revised. The main purpose of this is to make a common methodology so that all the member countries will follow and uh, the reporting will be uniform across the countries. That is the purpose. It includes uh, uh, land, these, uh, emissions from uh, terrestrial ecosystems as well. Now we're coming to the uh, assessment report, which is the main uh, report of IPCC. As I said, the sixth cycle. Uh, and also I said there are uh, three uh, 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 the parts of this report beyond uh, uh, synthesis report. So the purpose of this report is uh, to, say, uh, to say in the simple uh, terms, uh, to bring out the state of the scientific knowledge uh, and also the socioeconomic knowledge uh, on, the, on the impact of climate change. And also not only current impacts, how it's going to impact in the future. It could be 20 years, mid-century mid or late century or early century. And finally, uh, this report also provides us the how, how to reduce the uh, uh, climate change impact. It could be uh, by reducing emissions or the sequestering the carbon. So different uh, options have been uh, provided. Uh, and uh, the more important uh, point I would like to say is, is a global report. Uh, it cannot be uh, because it's a, the, since the, uh, uh, the content of this report is, uh, it gives us some directions, but at the same time, uh, it also uh, gives some flair of the regional uh, context to it. Uh, uh, this regional context was is brought for the first time in AR6. Earlier it was not there. Now uh, they have uh, made, uh, if not country-wise, region-wise. For example, South Asia, Southeast Asia, North America, like that they have uh, provided a separate uh, uh, chapter for that. So these are the uh, three reports, uh, uh, as you can see the dates uh, uh, starting from 2021 August, uh, latest one uh, was 4th April 2020, a couple of months back. Now, uh, what are the take-home messages in these uh, three reports? Let us see one of one by one. Uh, the first one is physical uh, science basis. 
uh, you can see here the uh, the clearly it is uh, the evidence is very clear uh, for a different uh, phenomena for example carbon dioxide concentration is the, is the highest so far in 2 million years what we have a 410 ppm which has been uh, uh, said based on scientific evidence it is one of the highest uh, in the 2 million years uh, uh, period sea level rise again is raising at a very alarming rate uh, taking 3000 years of uh, study into consideration uh, you can see at the bottom the uh, uh, the, the recent uh, three decade three decadal uh, period uh, increase in uh, sea level rise for example, 1900 to 1971, uh, 70 years period, that is, that is the, the increase was 1.3 mm per year. Later on, 71 to 2006, 1.9. Now, the latest one, 3.7 mm per year is, is, is a very, very alarming. So, uh, uh, this is a cause of concern, uh, not only for uh, the islands, but also for agriculture, more so for India, because we have long uh, sea coast. Arctic ice and the glacier retreat is a major uh, issue which has been discussed in earlier reports as well. And now it has been uh, conclusively uh, said that this is uh, the unprecedented uh, over the past 100 to 2000 years based on uh, several uh, model studies. Now, uh, what the report says about the temperatures, uh, how temperature shooting up uh, uh, in the past, uh, uh, for example, from 1850 onwards, 2020, the last year. And they compared it with the uh, last 2000 years. Uh, this graph. Uh, 2000 years, uh, uh, that is the increase in temperature is not much, is uh, hovering around 0.5 degrees centigrade up and down. But they all started in 1850, you are all aware of this. And the, uh, the rate at which uh, it is increasing uh, from 1850 onwards is uh, shown in the right side uh, box picture. Uh, you can see here the uh, uh, the simulated uh, uh, temperatures from 1850 without human intervention, okay, and without with with human intervention, and also the natural uh, without any uh, GHG emissions. What could what what is supposed to be the uh, levels of uh, these uh, temperatures? It's very clearly it's very clear from this is all because of the uh, anthropogenic factors. Uh, the temperature rise is uh, has been is observed. Now, uh, different models have been projected to see how it's going to, uh, the temperature is going to be there uh, at least up to 2050. Uh, the SSPs are there for the economic pathways. Uh, uh, but here you can see SSP2 is, uh, uh, we can say it's uh, 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 one of the, I mean, more realistic or uh, uh, if you go to SSP3, it's a higher uh, emission sites. So uh, in any, any case, as in the morning that the previous speaker said, we already, it's more certain that uh, we are going to touch 1.5 degrees centigrade by 2050. We're already at 1.11, now uh, it's more certain at uh, 1.5. Now the, all the efforts are to curtail it below 2 degrees centigrade by, 2000, uh, by the end of the century. So uh, that's how uh, this report is, uh, gives us the information. Now, uh, how this temperature is, uh, data is across the globe. Uh, you can see here the, at one degree centigrade, uh, the, the, the global uh, observed and the simulated temperatures is almost the same. Uh, the point here is uh, the uh, land surfaces are warming up more than the uh, uh, ocean surfaces. So that's, that's uh, one message across the globe. And then the next level, 1.5, 2 degrees centigrade, 4 degrees centigrade, uh, you can see the uh, more red is uh, the warming will be very higher. Uh, you can also see the temperature warming is uh, more towards Arctic regions and then uh, less towards the uh, 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 south of the uh, southern part of it. And however, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, most of the uh, um, countries are going to experience uh, uh, the uh, global warming at a different uh, simulated uh, conditions. Now, coming to rainfall, the other uh, important factor uh, which can be uh, simulated. Please, I... Uh, you can see Who here. Who would you like to call? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, at one uh, again, it is uh, On present, it. presented 1.5, 2 degrees centigrade, 4 degrees centigrade. How the rainfall Still working. is uh, going to uh, change? Uh, the message here is the. Sorry, uh, I'm having trouble with the connection. Please try again in a moment. 
Hello? Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. There is some disturbance. Okay. Um, uh, the, the, the message in this graph is uh, the, 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 there is an increase in temperature in uh, uh, high altitudes, equatorial regions, and parts of monsoon, monsoon regions. Same time, there will be decrease in temperature and the parts of uh, many subtropical and tropical regions. So in, you can see the India is uh, going to uh, have uh, more rains uh, compared to the uh, other parts of the uh, uh, regions in the uh, surrounding areas. And the bottom image gives us the information on the uh, soil, uh, uh, soil moisture availability, uh, which is relevant to agriculture. Uh, this again uh, derived from the rainfall. Uh, you can see here the uh, South, in, uh, South Asia and the North, North Africa, East Asia is going to uh, have high moisture availability for agriculture. And other regions, North, North America, Europe, and also uh, Australia, New Zealand, Southern part of Africa is going to suffer uh, by moisture uh, deficits. That is it. Now, second part of the, uh, the report was uh, on impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability. And uh, there is uh, clear indications that there will be increase in heat and drought, uh, and which is going to affect not only the crops and also the uh, in agriculture sector, at least the workers. Um, uh, it is also uh, uh, projected in this report, their efficiency is, uh, is going to come down. Uh, also, uh, and also the crop yields are going to come down. And all it leads to uh, reduced household income, uh, increase uh, food prices, both local at global level. And then the climate risks, uh, as I said, heat stress, uh, uh, exposed to heat waves uh, continues to increase uh, in the years to come. Water scarcity, and one statement uh, provided is at two degrees centigrade, uh, regions uh, relying on snow melt uh, uh, is going to experience uh, more uh, uh, water shortage uh, compared to the monsoon dependent regions. Food security already mentioned, and the flood, flood the events of uh, tropical cyclones are going to be more in the years to come. And then the uh, uh, food security aspect, uh, how to deal with uh, the uh, uh, global uh, warming and its impacts. First one uh, is uh, cultivar improvement, which uh, all of us uh, have been working on it. Agroforestry has been proposed because it has a lot of sequestration potential and uh, uh, diversification at farm and landscape uh, level. Uh, instead of growing for uh, monocropping, go for diversified cropping. And then all the uh, approaches should be on a community based. Uh, and the biodiversity was uh, talked, uh, given a lot of importance in this report compared to the previous reports. And all these uh, benefits on, on a large scale is uh, addressing food security, health, well being, and livelihoods of the community uh, throughout the globe. The last part is uh, mitigation. Uh, as you can see here in this graph, uh, different uh, greenhouse gases, uh, it has uh, been projected here. Their percent increase compared to uh, 1990 to 2019. All the gases, including methane, nitrous oxide, uh, maybe the percentage may vary, but they're all increasing in the past uh, uh, two decades, two to three decades. Now, uh, region-wise, I was mentioning in the uh, uh, couple of uh, minutes back, uh, which uh, region uh, is uh, contributing more to GHG emissions. Uh, this uh, particular uh, picture, it was uh, the it was projections are uh, shown here from 1990 to 2090 onwards. Uh, you can see here the Eastern Asia, that means including China, the uh, emissions uh, in, uh, from 1990 to compared to 2090 is increased. 13% 1990, now it's almost 27%. Uh, North America, of course, a uh, little bit less, 18%, now it's 12%. The rest all countries, uh, because of implementation of their indices, the percent emissions are coming down, including South Asia. However, the total uh, uh, GHG emissions in terms of volume, it is increasing. Now, if you see the other uh, side of the coin is uh, the historical emissions, uh, because comparing with 1990, uh, it gives a different picture. And if you compare with historical emissions starting from 1850 uh, onwards, it gives totally a different picture. You can see here the different uh, regions, uh, not country-wise, region-wise, uh, the contribution of uh, GHG emissions uh, by these regions. North America contributes 23% uh, of uh, emissions so far, followed by Europe, 16%, Eastern Asia, uh, may, may, may mostly China, 12%. All other countries are less than uh, 10%. Southeast Asia, one of the lowest, uh, including India, is only 4%. Now, uh, 
Now, uh, Sanjay was talking about the per capita income. Yes, South Asia is, is the lowest. It's around 2.5 to 3 tons uh, per uh, capita. And the North America is the highest. It's around uh, near 20. Uh, then followed by Australia, Japan, New Zealand is one group. Uh, Europe, European group is the other group. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, now this kind of analysis uh, uh, gives us the argument for uh, uh, different, uh, common for differential responsibility, which has been uh, deliberated in detail in the uh, climate change negotiations. Now, uh, the uh, emissions scenarios uh, with and without implementation of NDCs, uh, Sanjay was making a mention about this, same thing I'm uh, presenting here. Uh, you can see the, here the red color uh, graph uh, by uh, from 2009 to 2030 onwards. The emissions are going to uh, peak. Uh, if you uh, don't take uh, don't take additional commitments other than what you have committed, but uh, if you make additional commitments in another ten years uh, period, the emissions are going to come down. So that is the message uh, from this point, uh, from this analysis. Now uh, uh, the land use uh, patterns uh, since agriculture sector not only a source is also a sink, so that way it, it, the sector has a specific advantage. And now a lot of emphasis has been provided in these uh, reports for. Uh, uh, protecting and restoring the natural ecosystems uh, because it uh, sequesters a lot of carbon. It could be peatlands, coastlands, savannas, or grasslands. So uh, this is the one uh, point they have made it very clear. And then uh, uh, they clearly mentioned that uh, it, uh, it cannot compensate for any uh, delayed emissions from uh, other sectors. So uh, agriculture sector that way, uh, uh, though it's not contributing much, but still uh, it plays a key role uh, in global climate change. Now, uh, how uh, the whatever practices we in agriculture sector uh, is uh, contributing towards a sustainable development goals. You are all aware there are 17 SDGs, and uh, uh, we will see how uh, whatever actions we take uh, to be mitigation adaptation, they are addressing these goals. Uh, I have uh, this report listed uh, some seven to eight uh, mitigation options. Most of them are addressing uh, one or the other sustainable development goals. Goals except goal number four, five, and uh, seventeen. Uh, which are uh, not specific to agriculture sector, but uh, the the list of uh, mitigation options options uh, provided here are very very important and are going to play a key role uh, in planning our uh, agriculture policies in the years to come. Now, uh, what are the key messages uh, uh, we can take uh, home from this IPCC reports? Uh, now, it is very. Uh, uh, very clear that uh, there is be uh, mean temperatures will be uh, going to raise. Uh, is more so in the northern part of India and also hilly regions, the impact will be very higher. Rainfall, uh, though the, the total rainfall is high, but the intensity is varies and its distribution. This is a, a very, very crucial for agriculture crops. Sea level rise, as is uh, said, uh, it causes a lot of uh, sea, sea water intrusion, makes the soil saline. It has direct impacts on agriculture sector. Extreme other, other, other events, events, it could be drought, cyclone, flood, Hailstorms of late for the past 15, 20 years, we, we are having hailstorms. Earlier, we don't have heat waves. We have seen uh, uh, last month, April, uh, into gangstic plains, almost 6 million ton uh, yield is projected to be reduced. So now all these things uh, will be a recurring phenomena. Now uh, we have uh, several options. Uh, and we are already working on many of them, but it's not enough. Uh, for example, the climate resilient uh, varieties, uh, many of the crop institutes, including IMR, it's one of the ma uh, mandate for the institutes. But the approach, earlier we used to uh, uh, develop a, a variety to a particular trait, or it could be a drought, or it could be uh, pest uh, tolerance. Now, uh, the time has come to uh, go for multiple uh, stresses. I know it's very difficult, but it's challenging. That's the need of the hour now. And uh, there are uh, certain facilities, which is if you can have it, uh, for example, Raynaud shelters and the speed breeding facilities. Uh, I wish every uh, crop institute will have it. So that we will we can uh, generate the, uh, I mean, ad advance the generations and uh, bring out the uh, varieties in a short period. Besides this, uh, uh, we you know we all know we'll be getting a high amount of rainfall. We need to harvest this excess amount of rainfall and then try uh, the means and ways to use it to increase the cropping intensity in the uh, second season, that is rabi season. Besides this, climate change research will be a continuous aspect because still we uh, have don't have a fairly uh, uh, an understanding of many other. Uh, crops which we grow, except for major crops, many other crops, we are still have to, to have understanding of these crops, how they behave to climate change. 
uh, morning uh, Dr. Dr. Jatin was mentioning about pests and diseases. Yes, it's a concern for us. New pests are emerging and uh, their intensity, their spread is increasing. And uh, there is a, a need to go for the climate smart farm machinery by renew using renewable energy resources. Also the drones, now government of India is giving a lot of importance for drones. Uh, as of now, we are using drones only for pesticide sprays, but a lot of things can be done uh, with these drones, particularly if you go for imaging and then uh, damage assessment during extreme events. Uh, otherwise, traditionally, uh, if there is a cyclone or uh, uh, hailstorm, it takes uh, months together, sometimes years together to pay the compensation. With these drones, the technology maybe within weeks or uh, a couple of weeks, we can uh, enumerate and then uh, provide the information to the respective governments so that the relief can be uh, very fast. Uh, livestock and fisheries, important sectors, there are again, they are very vulnerable. Uh, it is very important to develop a resilient uh, systems for in these uh, factors also. Now emissions, there is a lot of uh, talk about emissions in these reports. Um, uh, but uh, as far as India point of view, uh, emissions, we are, uh, many of our schemes and projects are aimed at reducing emissions, but we have not made any commitments from this sector because of several reasons. Uh, and then uh, there's also uh, uh, advocacy to uh, increase the soil organic carbon, carbon content and use of uh, biochar in large scale for soil amendment. Again, uh, in view of a lot of uncertainties uh, in Indian context, uh, there is not much agreement on uh, upscaling this, uh, these two technologies, though they're very important, but without any commitment. We are doing it, but without any commitment. Uh, and then irrigation. Uh, there's another peculiar situation was there where uh, the irrigation was uh, shown as a potential show, source of global warming. Uh, there's a report, our own co colleagues, they have published one paper where the Indo-Gangetic Plains, the, uh, the regular irrigation uh, over the years uh, is caused shifting of uh, uh, monsoon. So uh, such kind of things have been uh, negotiated and uh, uh, it was not uh, made part of this uh, report because of our interventions from India and many other developing countries. So instead of that, we said that uh, the, we highlight the positive impact of irrigation because it's a food security and uh, reducing vulnerability. So that way it was uh, dropped in the, from the report. Adaptation and uh, co-benefits of adaptation is our focus, but not uh, mitigation. It has been told time and again, and again, this uh, year also in the IPCC negotiations, where I am also part of uh, in this process, this has been brought out very clearly. And then, um, uh, as I said, uh, mitigation, uh, we don't, uh, uh, we do, though we do it on uh, never, several national schemes uh, without any commitment. So this again, uh, a point to consider. And then uh, upscaling resident technologies, we have been doing it and we will continue to do it. And the latest announcement by the Prime Minister in the COP26, net zero by 2070. Now, uh, here uh, the question has come, uh, now uh, whether to bring agriculture sector into NDC. So once you bring uh, it to NDC, then uh, it's a, it becomes a commitment. So it is a, a point of, because the agriculture sector is highly sensitive to uh, both uh, political and uh, economical space, it needs uh, further deliberations whether to bring it to NDC or not. Uh, future climate change research, uh, as per my understanding uh, in these negotiations, uh, I think we should undertake uh, more of uh, metadata analysis. We have been publishing in bits and pieces uh, from different uh, from several locations. Unless somebody does a meta-analysis on studying the impact of climate change in agriculture on a regional scale. Uh, otherwise, such kind of uh, bits and pieces are not considered as a uh, reference in IPCC reports because they're all uh, refers to a small uh, location. So this is our first priority. And the uh, impact of, uh, of adaptation mitigation uh, practices and GH emission should be done at landscape level. We have been doing it maybe a plot level or farmer spill level. It should be done at landscaping level. It could be uh, through modeling or through actual measurements that has to be done. And more importantly, mapping of schemes because government of India, particularly uh, Ministry of Agriculture implementing several schemes under uh, NMSA. But majority of the schemes are not mapped in terms of their put, uh, the, their ability to mitigate or reduce the emissions uh, or, or uh, adaptation benefits. That angle, it has been not assessed. So now we need to assess this. Uh, food losses, I mentioned, has been made. Uh, uh, that uh, is still an area of concern for us. And uh, uh, other important thing is, we, uh, we as a scientist are very eager to uh, publish 
negative impacts, impacts of uh, climate change because it will be easily published. But there's other angle to it, positive impacts. If you, uh, uh, if you can have a proper analysis and thought, it can be brought out. We are attempting, for example, I'll tell you, in uh, Himalayan regions, there'll be added advantage for uh, maize cultivation because of high temperatures. So we need to collect data and try to publish it. So that's kind of information. This so now we have to work in that directions. Of course, capacity building uh, on cutting edge climate change research tools, particularly to the middle and the young uh, career scientist is uh, important in my opinion. So last two, three, uh, couple of slides, as uh, uh, mentioned earlier, I had an opportunity to be part of this COP26 at Glasgow. Uh, and I participated in two uh, negotiation groups. One is agriculture, it's called uh, Karunia Joint Work on Agriculture. And also loss and damage is indirectly related to agriculture sector. So uh, I have uh, seen uh, the commitments uh, from many nations in this uh, COP26. I have listed some of them here including the developing country like Brazil, for example. See, uh, they have committed uh, to uh, reduce the emissions by 1 billion tons. Of course, other Germany, uh, UK, Euro European unions, USA, and uh, you can see the numbers. Uh, UK, 75% of the farmers will be con converted to uh, low carbon practices. European Union, the carbon farming initiative, a lot, lot of uh, schemes have been initiated. United States, one of the highest uh, uh, commitment of the uh, 55% emissions reductions uh, by 2030. It's a huge commitment. Uh, and then you can see here at the bottom, the different initiatives undertaken by USDA in the past uh, one or two years. Now, as uh, for, as a uh, uh, India, uh, from India, we don't have uh, been such kind of commitments, uh, but still we highlighted whatever ongoing programs uh, that uh, that are towards climate resilience. Uh, it's an MSAR, could be organic farming, bamboo mission, or including our ICR, known ICR project Nikra, which has huge impacts. That this we highlighted in this negotiation process. Now, there are certain uh, sticky uh, points uh, which needs uh, consideration. One is uh, emissions from livestock, which has been, uh, came for a negotiation time and again, uh, which uh, we try to avoid or we, have, we try to uh, been, uh, not uh, agree upon it. Uh, as uh, told in the morning, uh, uh, one of, uh, livestock is one of the highest GHG uh, uh, emission contributor from India, it's around 54%. And our population is growing at the rate of 4.6%. Uh, every five years. So, and um, um, productivity compared to the developed nations, our per, per animal productivity is very less. But at the same time, we cannot, uh, it is very difficult to decrease the emissions from livestock based on the uh, whatever technology we have. So, that's why it's a, a very sensitive issue. We, it is not agreed upon. Other important aspect was our uh, fertilizer use efficiency is one of the lowest in the world, India's. The recent report, uh, Sustainable Nitrogen Management Index ranked India is uh, at 108 rank out of 180, uh, 180 countries. Uh, there is another report, uh, Environmental uh, uh, Performance Index. Uh, India is still uh, ranked very poor, 168 of 180. But of course, the EPA is mostly for air quality control, but there are also the uh, uh, nutrient exceptions has also been brought into the report. There is a, a discussion about uh, methane. It's one of the GHG uh, emissions. Uh, there is a proposal to reduce these emissions by 30%. Uh, by 2030 onwards. This initiative by United States and EU. And again, uh, for a country like India, it's uh, difficult to achieve. From agriculture sector, overall, it's you can think of. From agriculture sector, since you, once you say methane, it's targeting to uh, paddy and livestock. So we said uh, you know, agriculture sector uh, per se is not included. Overall, from uh, natural gases, we will do it. And uh, um, uh, as, uh, as Dr. Sanjay was mentioning, there is a lot of scope for International funding, it could be GCF, GF, uh, adaptation fund. Uh, there are now it's uh, opening up, uh, including uh, for adaptation. Now the emphasis was for including for adaptation. Uh, now to re-emphasize India's position, uh, uh, since uh, we uh, our commitment, 2020 commitment is uh, economy-wise reductions, not uh, sector-wise or uh, GAG gas-wise emission uh, reduction emissions. We stick on to this in this uh, COP also. And our strength is the emissions per hectare or per ton of food grains is still uh, one of the lowest in the world. You can say it's India is in ninth position uh, in the, out of 180 countries. So this was our argument put forth uh, to support uh, uh, the emissions part. 
uh, said that we still will committed to work towards uh, resilient agriculture through our uh, schemes and uh, projects. Thank you uh, uh, for your time.